Hello everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to the Minecraft Emporium. Attempts at a guy's vault escape are numerous, but this just might, possibly, perhaps, be the first escape from within the main cell, without item smuggling and just a tiny bit of external preparations. I'm not clickbaiting you by saying, oh, build an enderpearl stasis chamber beforehand. No, 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 I'm talking about a completely different redstone technology that can remove indestructible end crystals remotely. Before we get into that, however, subscribing is the topic on the table. It's completely free, keeps you up to date with the machinations of the channel, and would mean the absolute world. With that, it is time for the procedure. Alrighty, ladies and gents, so this magical new technology that I talked about in the intro is actually very simple. It's right behind me. It is, of course, a sand pusher. Now, if you're unfamiliar with sand pushers, I will explain. By simply unflicking this lever here, we will be blasted back an enormous distance. And you might be wondering, Alex, how on earth is this remotely useful? I mean, what does this have in, even to have to do with prisons? Well, the answer is very simple, indestructible end crystals. Those are entities, and those entities can be pushed by a sand pusher in the same way that any item can. And one of the benefits of using a sand pusher, which somehow uses a glitch having to do with piston heads and slabs and stairs and things, is that it can work through solid blocks. For example, if I was to throw some items or summon an end crystal, or literally any entity, can be a mob, TNT, any entity in the entire game, it can still be pushed by this magical force of the sand pusher, as you can see. And so perhaps you may be catching on, and I'm trying not to beat around the bush too much here, that what a person would do would be to build this kind of sand pusher on the very outskirts of the band radius of Gaia's vault, and align it directly with either a hallway that, that they need to access free of end crystals, or the prisoner's cell. And once they do so with the maximum amount of sand their computer can possibly handle, all they have to do is flick it, and those end crystals, everything inside of a straight linear line with the range of the sand pusher, will be moved away towards the back end of that range. Hopefully I'm making sense here, because by adding more and more sand to this to the sand pusher, you can go as far in my testing as about those piston heads over there, which is absolutely enough to push away end crystals from vaults and things of that nature. And if you somehow don't believe me that sand pushers don't work on end crystals, I will demonstrate. Now imagine this is either one strip of the prisoner's cell or as a hallway or something along those lines, and we were to summon in some end crystals just like so, you can see that from, uh, you know, your friend from outside the prison, as soon as they hit this button in this position here, all of these end crystals will be knocked back all the way to the edge of the range of those sand pushers. And now, if this was, say, a hallway, we can now begin to break blocks from the inside just because those indestructible end crystals are now out of the way. Or, if this was the inside of the prisoner's cell, all of those end crystals would not be moved outside the prison, but they would just be moved all into one singular spot. And as soon as there is a singular spot that the end crystals are not on, the prisoner can break blocks. Alright, so before we get into those, one more thing I want to note is that there are a, there is a very limited number of blocks that can actually be placed on indestructible end crystals, despite having that indestructible end, uh, end crystal uh, quality. For example, if I summon some end crystals here, there's a very, very limited number of blocks, say oak signs, paintings, ladders, and scaffolding, which can actually be placed on indestructible end crystals. Of course, you can literally not place any other block in the game, but you can, in fact, place scaffolding inside of these blocks. I don't know if that helps, but it might be useful. You can also place signs inside of this position, but one interesting thing is that you can't actually break the signs or the scaffolding once they've been placed. You can only kind of build up with them. Things like banners and tripwire hooks and buttons and, and ladders, you can also all place there. Now getting into the actual escape, Scene Sven mentioned that cobblestone regenerates inside of the prisoner's cell every 0.5 seconds. And so what this means 
is that we can actually exploit the ability to get suffocated by a cobblestone in order to escape the prison. If you're confused what I mean, my basic idea how to escape Gaia's Vault is to firstly remove the end crystals from the cell. And then once the end crystals are removed from the cell, what you want to do is break a block in the floor. Of course, that block will regenerate, but if you're lucky and hit it when the block is in the not pushing position, you can actually begin to go into swim mode. Of course, you have to get lucky and you have to do it quite quickly, although if you think about it, 0.5 seconds is actually a rather long amount of time. So once you've entered into the swim mode by simply double tapping forward, what you want to do is go into the very corner of the build. I messed it up there, but again, you have an infinite number of attempts. Once you break that block, I know it takes four hours, but we're, we're, we're talking about hypotheticals here. We then swim over to the corner block. Now again, this is going to require some some uh, some some probability here because we want to get suffocated by the cobblestone. And once we're suffocated, if we were in survival mode, we would begin taking damage. And what happens is whenever we save an exit with our head inside of a solid block, what we're going to do is actually respawn on the highest vertical block. It also helps if you're tapping space, but because I'm in creative mode, tapping space will make me fly and that will ruin the experiment. And so, as long as there is a solid column of blocks all the way up from the prisoner's cell, all the player prisoner has to do is simply relog, and they're going to be on the top vertical block. There can be a bajillion layers of obsidian here, and all they would have to do is simply relog. To recap, the prisoner breaks a block on the floor and hopes that they can get down in enough time in order to go into swim mode. Once they are in swim mode, they have to swim up from that block location there, or the piston down below will begin, will begin pushing them up again. And once they have been pushed up, they will then go to this corner location over here and try to break a block. If the block regenerates, then the prisoner can now move inside and then they can relog from that position there. I'm going to uh, break a few blocks just so that I can... Oh, can I even escape, please? Thank you. All right, all, right, all my redstone might be might have been ruined, but that is the general idea. Once you're on the top part of the volcano of Gaia's Vault, then you're going to need the buddy who, uh, who set up the sand pushers to ride a flying machine over and then drop you an elytra and some fireworks. And that is kind of my idea. I would love for you to leave me your comments down below, and of course, whether the guards see you and whether the guards do anything or along those lines is a completely different story. My job here is to give you a possibility of execution, not necessarily the most effective way. But in any case, if you were intrigued by anything I had to say, please do consider subscribing, and with that all out of the way, take care.